when an electron in an atom receives energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, it moves to a higher energy level. This is known as electron leap. The electron gives off the same amount of energy in the same form and with the same frequency and drops back to its initial position. This is why the emission and absorption lines of an element are the same. How the electron jumps from one energy level to another without going through the other energy levels is very mysterious. But of course, one is told to accept mystery as part of quantum mechanics. This electron leap, which leads to the absorption or release of a photon, is what I shall be addressing in this video, and then use the same reasoning on solar systems to explain the graviton. Niels Bohr's Nobel Prize was due to his ability to explain the emission and absorption lines of hydrogen. What he proposed is that electrons in atoms exist in orbit around the nucleus, which he called shells, and each shell has an associated amount of energy. In other words, the energy of the electron in a given shell is equal to the energy of that shell. He proposed that the energy difference between any two shells is equal to the energy of the electromagnetic radiation that will be emitted or absorbed, which according to the discovery of Max Planck and Einstein at the time, was equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency of the EM radiation. So, Bohr calculated the energy differences of the various energy levels present in the hydrogen atom. And by this formula, he got the different frequencies of the EM radiations that could be emitted or absorbed by hydrogen. When hydrogen gas under low pressure was given a surge of energy, it emitted radiations of the exact frequencies calculated by Bohr, ascertaining the validity of Bohr's formula. If you have been following this channel, then you know that I have derived very clearly the same formula for solar systems, which is E equal to GF, G being the universal Planck's constant, and has value, value 1.72 exponential 42 joules second. If this is your first time here, then please refer to the video titled Quantum Mechanics and Relativity under this Quantum Gravity playlist to see how G was derived. Don't also forget to subscribe to follow up. And for the sake of the YouTube algorithm, please click on that like button. In those videos under the quantum gravity playlist, we establish that the orbits of the planets are the shells. According to NASA, these are the energies of the planets of our solar system. Let's choose two levels the orbit of Jupiter and the orbit of Mercury, and take their energy difference. Using Bohr's approach, this energy difference is equal to GF. So F is equal to delta E over G. Making the substitutions gives F equal to 0 0.9 exponential minus 7 Hertz. This is the frequency of a gravitational wave. You can choose any two levels and follow the same procedure, and you will always have a frequency of a gravitational wave. This discovery tells us that gravitational waves are related to solar systems in the same way that EM waves are related to atoms. If a planet were to move from one energy level to the other, it will absorb or emit a gravitational wave of corresponding frequency. This directly begs the question, how can a planet move from one orbit to the other? I will attempt to explain this, but do not take my word for it. Please look at the explanation closely with an open mind and decide for yourself if it is correct or not, and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. It is well known that the passage of gravitational waves through any given region of space 
causes the region of space to contract and relax accordingly. Take a look at this animation of the passage of a gravitational wave. Let us analyze this animation. Let's take a solar system with three orbits, all equally spaced. Also, let's consider that a gravitational wave is going horizontally according to your screen. In that case, the solar system will contract like so and stretch like so. For a planet in the second orbit, we have the following representation. Notice that both the planet and the star are also stretched, but the center of mass will remain approximately the same. And you know that we measure distances from the center of mass. Sometimes the wave could hit the planet before the star, leaving the actual center of mass of the star in place. For the first case, you see that our planet's position corresponds to the position of the first orbit of the stable stable solar system, and the planet in the second case appears to be in the third orbit. Since the center of mass does not change, then this is the same as having this planet jump between these energy levels, and we have our planet leap, which if it was an electron, we would say electron leap. Under the playlist Waves and Particles, I analyze the similarities between gravitational and EM waves, one of which is that they are both oscillations in the fabric of space-time. So the same analysis can be made for atoms when an EM wave strikes them, and we have then explained electron leap. So the energy level that an electron will move to depends on the wavelength of the photon that strikes it. And according to the way I have explained how the, end, how the electron will oscillate, you see that it does so at the frequency and wavelength of the photon. Reason why our experiments show that the electron can only absorb and emit the same wavelength of EM radiation. It can also be extrapolated from here that, like masses and gravitational waves, EM waves are created when an electron or any charged particle vibrates. Remember, a photon is a short pulse of electromagnetic radiation that contains only a few cycles of the radiation, and it is a photon that causes the electron to vibrate, as explained. Since a short pulse of gravitational waves does the same thing, we can say a short pulse of gravitational waves that contain just a few cycles of this wave is something analogous to the photon. And the obvious guess is that this is the graviton. I would like to hear your thoughts about this. And for the newcomers, please subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching.